Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this Power Platform Fundamentals TL900 Certification Examination course. In this video, we're going to learn about how to build a model-driven app. Let's look at the high-level topics we are going to learn about in this video. We will learn what model-driven apps are and how they differ from Canvas app. We will learn how to build the building blocks of model-driven apps and how to create and design model-driven apps. And finally, how to change the security and share the model-driven apps as well. Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Model-driven app design is a component-focused approach to app development. Model-driven app design does not require code and the apps you make can be simple or very complex. Unlike Canvas app development, whereas the designer has the complete control over app layout, much of the layout is determined for you with model-driven apps and largely designated by the components you add to the app. So what are the approach to making model-driven apps? Model-driven apps have three design phases. First, model your business data. Second is to define your business processes. And third step is to build the apps. And final step is building the app. Model-driven app uses the metadata-driven architecture so that designers can customize apps without writing code. To model business data, you determine what data the app will need and how that data will relate to other app. And after modeling the data and defining the process, you build your app by selecting and setting up the components you need in the app designer. So don't worry about the app designer. I will show you when we create a sample model-driven app. Let's understand the building blocks for model-driven apps. A model-driven app consists of several components that you select by using App Designer. The first is data. So these are the different data components that make up the model-driven app. Entity, field, relationship, optional set of field data, etc. This can determine what data the app will be based upon. So what is entity? Entities are items with properties that you can track. What about field? Fields are properties that are associated with an entity and help define that entity. A field is defined by data type, which determines the type of data that can be entered or selected. Relationships define how entities can be related to each other. There are one to many and many to one as well. And you can have many to many relationship as well. And finally, the last type is option set field. This type of field shows a control that lets the user select among predefined options. Each option has a number value and label. The next one is user interface. User interface have components such as app, sitemap, forms and views. App determine the app fundamentals like components properties like client type and the URL. Sitemap specifies the navigation for your app. A form include a set of data entry fields for a given entity. This set of data entry fields matches the items that your organization tracks for the entity. And the last one is view. Views define how list of records for specific entity appear in your app. The third building block is called logic. The logic components determine what business processes, rules, and automation the app will have. The first one is business process flow. Business process flows walk users through a standard business process. Use a business process flow if you want everyone to handle customer service requests the same way, or you can use a business process flow to require staff to gain approval for an invoice before submitting an order. The second option is workflow. Workflows automate business processes without a user interface. Designers use workflows to initiate automation that does not require any user interaction. The third type is actions. 
Actions are a type of process that lets you manually invoke behaviors, including custom actions, directly from a workflow. Another type is business rule. Business rules apply rules or recommendation logic to a form to set field requirements, hide or show fields, validate data, and more. App designers use a simple interface to implement and maintain fast changing and commonly used rules. And the final type is flows. Power Automate is a cloud based service that lets you create automated workflows between apps and services to get notifications, sync files, collect data, and more. And the last building block is visualization. The visualization component determines what type of data and reporting the app will show and have available and which designer is used to create or edit that component. The components involved within visualizations are chart, dashboard, embedded Microsoft Power BI, etc. Charts are individual graphical visualization that can appear in a view or a form or that can be added to a dashboard. Dashboards show one or more graphical visualization in one place that provide an overview of actionable business data. And Power BI adds embedded Power BI tiles and dashboards to your app. And Power BI is a cloud-based service that provides business intelligence insight. So let's have a quick look at an app designer for an example model-driven app called Fundraiser. As you can see, there are two entities. The first one is donation and the second one is fundraiser. So let's see an example on how to create a sample model-driven app. So first step for that is I'm going to take you to the Power Apps portal. You know how to do that. You need to go to make.powerapps.com. So I'm in my Power Apps portal. So now let's create a sample model driven app from blank. Click on create, give a name for your app and click on create or done. So this is the designer we were talking about. Now we can add components to your app by using this app designer. In this sitemap designer, click, click on this pencil icon. This will open the sitemap designer. And in the sitemap designer, select the new sub area. And in the right pane on the properties tab, you can select the following properties. Type as entity, you can type in account and you can then select save and close. So now we have a new entity created. Now let's select forms and in the right hand pane under main forms, select accounts form. Click on forms and unselect the all. I'm going to select the main form and I'm going to keep it account. And under views, I'm going to select active accounts all accounts and my active accounts and i'm going to select charts within charts i'm going to select accounts by industry chart and i'm going to hit on save similarly you can add as many forms as you want and then you can edit edit in the app designer once you complete the objective what you are trying to achieve then you would be able to go and publish it so you can click on publish to publish your app and the Power Apps environment includes a predefined security roles as well. These roles reflect common user tasks and access levels that are defined follow the best practices for providing access to minimum amount of business data that is required to use the app. Some of the predefined security roles include system administrator, system customizer, common data service user, and delegate rights. So that concludes this lesson. In the next video, we're going to learn about introduction to Power Apps portals. So I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.